Welcome to This Is Real Real Estate. Hi there, my name is Vong Kennedy and I'm with the Vong Realty Group. In these vlogs, I hope to share with you my journey and experiences as a realtor, buyer, and investor. My goal is to give buyers and sellers first-hand insight into the world of real estate as I navigate through it myself. These vlogs will give you a glimpse into my day-to-day -day happenings as a real estate agent and take you all for a tour of our newest listings. Hopefully, this will help you better understand the buying and selling process and how real estate works. Let's get into it. Are you a home buyer or hoping to be one sometime soon? And this episode is meant for you. When you're buying a home, the one thing you don't want to skip out on is a final or pre-closing walkthrough. You've made an offer on a home and your offer has been chosen. Congratulations. So you have officially purchased the house and it's a couple days before closing. Now you're wondering, is a final walkthrough necessary? At the end of the day, the decision is yours, but I highly recommend it to my clients. A final walkthrough is an opportunity for you to ensure the property is still relatively in the same condition it was in at the time you purchased it. For instance, if when you purchased the property, your offer stated all the appliances and mechanicals are to be in good working condition. At the final walkthrough, you would have the opportunity to verify this and hopefully resolve any issues that may have arisen. I say hopefully because the seller would need to agree to the buyer's terms should there be any. How I do my final walkthrough with my buyer client is we walk the exterior to ensure the property is left free of debris and garbage. Then we head inside. I start from the front of the house to the back on the main floor, then head upstairs and then to the basement. From checking the doorbell to the lights, the doors, the windows and screens, to testing the appliances, furnace and AC, depending on the season and temperature outside, to checking the closets and the cupboards. I run all the faucets to ensure there are no plumbing leaks and that the water drains properly. We check the toilet to make sure it flushes properly as well. A final walkthrough typically takes about an hour and I walk through doing the above room by room with my buyer client. Now, what happens if we find that there is a leak under the kitchen sink or the oven doesn't turn on. It does not mean you can back out of the purchase of the property or delay the closing until the problem is resolved. So what avenues are available to you as a buyer if such an issue arises? Essentially, there are three possible outcomes that may occur if you encounter an issue during the final walkthrough. The first outcome might involve negotiating the seller to provide the buyer with a concession. For example, the oven is not turning on, depending on the make, brand, and age of the stove, with providing evidence from online resources and sharing this with my buyer's lawyer to convey this to the seller's lawyer, as well as working with the seller's agent closely, I can usually come to a reasonable agreement for my buyer. In order for this resolution to work, however, both the buyer and seller must agree on an amount. Or we can request for the sellers to have the oven repaired by a professional with proof of receipt to be provided and for me to have an opportunity to return to the property to ensure it is in good working condition. However, with the final walkthrough being typically one to two days before closing, there might not be enough time to schedule this in. With that said, the third potential resolution when it comes to issues during the walkthrough is what is known as a monetary holdback. A holdback is exactly what it sounds like. It is when a portion of the price of the property is held back on the closing date until certain issues are resolved or conditions are met. The money is held by the lawyers in their account and is usually around one and a half times the amount it would cost to resolve the issues to allow the seller's time to replace or repair the issue. Once the repairs are completed, then this amount is released to the sellers. The reason for the one and a half times the amount it would cost to resolve the issue is to motivate the sellers to have it resolved sooner rather than later. Again, both buyers and sellers would need to come to an agreement on this. So you can see the final walkthrough is a crucial part of the purchasing process that you don't want to skip as a buyer. 
If you are planning to do a final walkthrough, my recommendation is to schedule it one to two days before the scheduled closing date. It is important not to do the final walkthrough too early because if damages occur afterwards, you'll miss them. The other reason to schedule a final walkthrough as close as possible to the closing is in hopes that by then, the sellers have vacated and taken all their belongings with them. There is nothing requiring the sellers to be completely moved out before your final walkthrough. In a perfect world, that would be most ideal. If you are on the market to buy, sell, or invest in the Waterloo region and surrounding area, or have any real estate related questions, I'd love to hear from you. If you liked what you saw in today's video, be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this. I'm Vong Kennedy with the Vong Realty Group. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.